Hello, everybody, and welcome to the very first episode of Cave Cat's Movie and TV Reviews. It's me, the one and only Cave Cat. For the first episode of this review show, I'm going to tell you about a show I remember watching from my childhood. Tell me a story, read me a poem, rap it in melody, sing me the song, then let me hold it deep in my heart, where it can speak to me all the day long. That's right. It's Adventures from the Book of Virtues, which was PBS's very first primetime animated series, first released back in 1996. Although, at the time that the show was first released, a lot of people accused it of trying to compete with The Simpsons in regards to primetime television animation, but it still did fairly well in the ratings. However, I didn't get into the show until a few months after it first premiered, considering the fact that I was nine back in 96. But when I first got a chance to see the show, I just loved, loved, loved it so much so that I would watch it on TV every Sunday night. For those who don't know, Adventures from the Book of Virtues was actually based on The Book of Virtues, A Treasury of Great Moral Stories, and The Children's Book of Virtues, written by William J. Bennett in 1993 and 1995, respectively, and was produced by Porchlight Entertainment. This is because in 1994, Bruce D. Johnson, who was actually the then Vice President of Hanna-Barbera at that time, contacted Bennett and expressed interest in wanting to turn the Book of Virtues into an animated series. So because of that, Adventures from the Book of Virtues was born. So what's the show about? It's about two kids named Zack and Annie who end up having a problem of some kind. So because of that, they end up retreating to a mountainous area called Plato's Peak, where they learn various life lessons from their animal friends, Plato the Buffalo, Aurora the Red-Tailed Hawk, Aristotle the Prairie Dog, and Socrates the Bobcat although that last character doesn't actually really contribute to the teaching. So what kind of lessons do Zack and Annie learn? Well, they learn about various virtues, ranging from work, compassion, honesty, responsibility, friendship, courage, self-discipline, etc., done in the form of telling various stories from a wide variety of diverse cultures. When I first saw the show, I was amazed that they actually told these stories so vividly and faithfully, as well as the fact that these stories actually came from different countries, such as England, Mexico, Spain, Denmark, Africa, and even the USA, among others. The stories that they tell range from Bible stories, literary stories, Aesop fables, folk tales, Greek myths, and even stories that focus on real-life figures, such as Abraham Lincoln and Harriet Tubman. Not only that, but they also tell the stories very faithfully, with no sugarcoating whatsoever, especially the ones that include characters dying, which is very gutsy of them. Kids' shows these days are too scared to actually try that now because they try to stay clean and just meander about and taking their time to actually teach kids lessons. This show is different, though, because it actually knows to push the envelope when it comes to telling the various stories that fit with the corresponding virtue being taught. So a show like Adventures from the Book of Virtues is sorely needed for this day and age. Kids these days really need to actually learn these lessons from the stories told within the show. Another interesting thing about the show is that it actually made use of an all-star voice cast. I mean, sure, we got voice actors like Kath Susie, Pamela Siegel, Kevin Michael Richardson, Jim Cummings, and Frank Welker in the main voice cast. But they actually got a lot of celebrity actors, such as Ed Bagley Jr., Ed Asner, Mark Hamill, Tim Curry, Kathy Najimy, Michael York, Kathy Bates, Dean Jones, Tippi Hedren, Charlton Heston, Malcolm McDowell, etc., to voice the characters in the stories. This was just in the first two seasons of the show, though. So what am I talking about? Well, I'll get to that later. But anyway, let's get to the main characters of the show. Starting off with the main human characters, Annie is the more feisty and hot-headed one, though that doesn't stop her from understanding what's going on, especially when it comes to understanding the point of the lesson being taught to her. She's also of Native American descent, which I thought was a really nice touch to the show. Zack is more laid back and calm than Annie is, though sometimes he can't get frustrated or angry when things don't turn out the way he wants them to. That's kind of how I am too, but we're not here to talk about that. Despite this, he can also be persuaded to do the right thing. The talking animals that Zack and Annie interact with are also fun and entertaining in their own ways too. Plato is the wise and worldly philosopher who is gentle and patient when teaching the kids. Aurora is the second wisest who is the most watchful and considerate of the animals. Aristotle, or Ari for short, is the most eccentric and a little bit absent-minded and scatterbrained sometimes, but he's still as intelligent as Plato and Aurora are, 
And last but not least, Socrates, or Sock for short, is the least intelligent and enlightened of the animals, making him come across as being different from the rest of the main animals. As a kid, he was my favorite of the bunch because I found myself being amused by his antics. But now that I'm older, I realize that I actually identify with him more than I ever thought possible because I feel that he was supposed to be treated like he's the youngest of the main animals due to the fact that he's clumsy, lazy, and apathetic to the lessons being taught. Speaking of which, remember how I said that the first two seasons were the best seasons of the show? Well, after the second season ended, the show went on hiatus for two years, until the third season finally surfaced in 2000. However, with this new season came lots of changes, a lot of them not for the better. The voice cast was replaced with actors from the Ocean Group in Vancouver, Canada. The animation became really stiff and cheap. They reused a lot of virtues from the previous two seasons instead of using new and original ones. The stories used are rather generic and not told as seriously as the ones in the previous two seasons. And the biggest offender out of all these changes, they really flanderized Socrates to the point that whenever he gets himself into a situation, they really stretched out a lot of his antics to a rather unnecessary level. I mean, I understand that he's supposed to be the comic relief of the main group in order to lighten the mood of the show, but come on, people! There's no need to really take it over the top in an unneeded way. This is one of the reasons why the phrase quality over quantity exists. The third season definitely suffers from what TV tropes refers to as denser and wackier, where a TV show or movie series that starts out fairly serious and grounded in reality ends up having more outlandish and over-the-top plots and scenarios as it goes on. While the first two seasons had Sock get himself into a comical situation, at least they didn't take it too far like the third season did in nearly every episode. Another issue I have with the show is that nearly every single main character got a chance to tell a story, but Socrates never got to tell a story. Zack got lucky. At least the Determination episode gave him a chance to actually tell a story, while Annie also got to tell a story in two episodes, one of which being the aforementioned Determination episode. But moving on from that, another change that came to the show was the fact that back in 2006, which was a decade after the show first premiered, a group of English-speaking actors in Singapore redubbed every single episode of the first two seasons of the show, supposedly because Porchlight Entertainment was unable to pay royalties to the celebrity actors that, that guest starred in those episodes. That's a very cheap move on their part. In fact, that's also what happened with the real Ghostbusters, with the whole controversy of Peter Venkman being voiced by the late Lorenzo Music, and also with Cartoon Network's Whatever Happened to Robot Jones, where the title character was recast from being voiced by Macintosh to being voiced by a generic kid actor, due to the fact that Greg Miller, the creator of the show, was forced to have Robot Jones recast under strict orders from Cartoon Network. But anyway, with everything that I've talked about regarding the show, it's safe to say that even in spite of the flaws and changes that the show had, I still enjoyed it regardless. So because of that, I will give the first two seasons of Adventures from the Book of Virtues 8 stars. And I give the third season 5.5 stars. Even though I enjoyed the show when I was younger, I really feel that the third season could have been done better if Porchlight actually had the foresight to get their heads out of the ground and actually do a better job with it, like they did with the first two seasons. But all in all, I'm not going to complain about it anymore, because I've watched the show in its entirety as a kid, and I've come back to it recently, especially since I created a wiki of fandom page dedicated to the show months ago. Granted, it's still under construction, but with just a bit of work, it should be able to come full circle. Well, anyway, that's a wrap for the first episode of Cave Cats Movie and TV Reviews, and I'll see you in the next episode. Until next time, later!